Here is that car from that wee promotional video. I, this is my own car. This is uh, only gets occasional use. It's like a weekend car. And I bought this in 2006. This is a 2006 car. They did a production run up to 2010 or 11. About a four or five year run in these cars. This one here is the 2.2 JTS version. It's 2.2 petrol. And yeah. There's a bit of a clean out there. Uh, anyway, the point of this video is that at 16,000 miles, uh, when the car was six years old, I got a P0016 camshaft crankshaft correlation code. And what that meant, it was doing that on startup. So whenever you started the car, first started the car, it threw the engine management light on. Only did it occasionally, and the management light would uh, delete. So it got to the stage, it was fed up doing it. I must have deleted it about six times. It was doing it ugh, once every couple of weeks or something, but it was only on startup. So uh, I'll show you the wee picture uh, there. A couple of pictures I took at the time where, with the chain was indeed a bit slack. So what happens is uh, there's cam sensors on both cams. Uh, this car is very well valve timing, so on both camshafts. So it was seeing the uh, exhaust camshaft lagging behind a wee bit. So uh, that's what was happening. And I like this car. It's uh, it's definitely a bit. Uh, there's a bit more into the design of it than uh, your usual Euro boxes that you see all the time and everybody has your gulps and your passats and stuff like that that there is proper aluminium dashboard uh it's big sheet aluminium you can get this in carbon fiber as well uh, but typical alpha mayo quirk is a full panoramic full panoramic uh when uh sunroof well you call that a sunroof and a slide goes right across there uh, but in typical alpha style it has a load of wee quirks but there is there's the the boot release in the wee cupboard which is hidden away there probably don't even know about it it's one that's not in the glove box or something which I think some of them are I think a 159 so it's the same as a 159 only this is a coupe and uh, just put some benzina in it there and so uh, if you're watching this video you probably uh, recognize that date's wrong uh, but I don't bother changing I never bother changing the flat around so uh, hope uh, there's another wee bit coming up of uh, the, the look at the chain itself okay thanks Okay, that's the chain kit there. Uh, those two cam wheels don't use, those are standard ones. That's the slack chain between the exhaust and the inlet over to the right there. And that is the slack between the two. And that's why uh, we got the cam correlation fault. And that is the original tensioner. It does not have a wee dimple in the middle of it. And you can just about see in the mirror there, a wee dimple in the middle of that one. Okay, and the timing chain kit that I put in it was this uh, FIA time kit. I think that's maybe the, the balancer chain kit box there. But anyway, just the wee thing I was going to show you was the way you time, time these cars, time these 2.2 Vauxhall engines is with the uh, markings on the chain. So there's no markings on the casing for that to line up with. It goes against the chain, chain there. And the wee spot on the on the crank uh, cog here on that one there another wee thing to note is the tensioner uh, this tensioner hasn't got the wee wee spot on it so that's the old type tensioner the new type tensioner that showed in the wee photograph has a wee spot on it so you can look down the back of the engine with a mirror and see if it's got the upgraded temperature tensioner that's the old tensioner so whenever you put the tensioner in this is in the locked position so this tensioner is locked at the minute and it goes in against the uh, in against that guide. So what you need to do is you stick a screwdriver down, do a bit there on the chain, and push it in that way. 
And what that does is, if we can demonstrate that, if I push that against something, it, uh, it releases it and it's now sprung. So if it's not unlocked, what happens is that that spring is compressed and when it's in the locked position, it goes down that we, we slope there. So we pin inside that, and it goes down, or inside this, uh, sorry, and it uh, locks on that we flat bit. So when you give it a push, it falls off and falls down the slope, and uh, goes in the spring. If you have a car and you think maybe the tensioner, if you're getting a, ch a chain rattle on startup, a slight chain rattle on startup, it may be that that tensioner is locked. So uh, if if that tensioner is indeed locked, which it was previously, whenever you start the car up, the oil pressure builds up and the oil pressure is keeping the chain under tension. So that's a, a, wee, a wee one for you. And uh, you, could t you could pull that tensioner out, but you'll, with the, with the car in situ, but you run the risk of uh, losing your timing, because uh, you know I think I think the cam will fall if you if you if you take the rocket cover off and keep the cams, make sure the cams don't move. You can take that tensioner out and you can change that tensioner uh, without taking the front cover off. And that's the wee guide that that, go, that goes along the top there, and these are the guides and onto the crank. So. Hope that maybe helped somebody. Uh, as I say, it's a 2.2 uh, GM engine. It's found no vectors and stuff like that. Uh, I just I don't know whether they still use it or not. But it's in these Alfa Romeos. It's in 159 and the Brera, uh the GM block. It's a modified head. This one has valve uh, timing uh, changes. So and uh, it has a a, a larger manifold and uh, you can see down in there it's, uh, the injectors are below or in below here uh, so it's direct injection so uh, I think it's a different head than a normal Vauxhall 2.2 but generally speaking it's uh, it's the same block so thanks for watching and hope that helps somebody out thank you bye